Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Parallax Abstraction and welcome to Retro Flashback, showcasing gaming's roots for a new generation. We haven't done one of these in a while, have we? No, we haven't. It's been a bit of a busy month, but I am back and I have got a, another video for you on one of the gems of the Super Nintendo lineup. Yes, indeed, we are talking about Super Punch-Out. So I actually did a video about a, a few months ago, I guess now, on the original Punch-Out. And, well, a little bit of a... A retro nerd confession here. I've actually never played this game um, before. Well, I played it a little bit earlier this week for practice, but that's about it. Don't know how I missed this, because I was pretty big into the Super Nintendo, but it never ended up happening. And the reason I have been inspired to play this today is actually because of this year's Awesome Games Done Quick marathon. If you didn't see that, you should go watch it. There are archives up of it. It is unreal. It was a week-plus-long live stream marathon of speedruns for charity. And dude, <laughs> dude, it was unbelievable. And the reason I got inspired to do this is one of the players in that uh, event near the end actually beat this game completely blindfolded. I'm not even joking. And you know what? This thing remembers the save I had from before, so I'm just going to call myself PXA1. Yeah, a guy beat this game completely blindfolded. He got all the way to the end, which he had actually never managed to do before. You gotta watch it. It's amazing! I'm going to put a link to the archive of that in the description below this video. You, you gotta, you gotta see it. It's, it's... Dude's a savant. It's incredible. But I was interested to check this out as a result of that, because I was a little bit fascinated by it, because if you are a bit of an aficionado, oh, by the way, um, I am not only bad at this game in general, but I'm trying to do commentary over it, so I'm going to be horrible at this, so just FYI. But the reason I wanted to talk about this game is I find it very fascinating. If you're an aficionado of the 16-bit era, and I'm not just talking the NES and Genesis here. Oh, yeah. But uh, talking stuff like the Neo Geo as well, and uh, other arcade platforms like that, one of the things I found very interesting about Super Punch-Out compared to a lot of other Nintendo titles of the Super Nintendo era... I'm sorry, I love the way that guy says five. Five! Uh, one of the things I love about it is that it has a very non-Nintendo production aesthetic to it. So what do I mean by that? Well... Nintendo games have a certain style to them, a way they're presented, both visually and audibly, that makes them... Oh, I got him? Sweet. Um, he, the, and it's very, uh, it, it's very distinctly Nintendo, let's just put it that way. You know it when you see it. That's kind of the way they are. And that's something that carries through to this day, even with their modern games on the Wii U. But this game, what I find very cool about it is the way it's presented in terms of the... Jeez. I got some killer bonus there. The way it's presented in terms of the visual aesthetic, uh, the art style, even the music and sound effects, feels very much like a title that you would see on a platform like the Neo Geo or developed by somebody like SNK or um, Data East, maybe even Technos, somebody like that. If you're not really, really into this stuff, you probably don't get what I'm talking about. But if you played a lot of this stuff, this dude, you know what I'm talking about, and and uh, that that's what I find great about it because it's not bad. Like, oh wow, I'm bombing this one good. It's not bad at all. Like the aesthetic of this game, I think, is actually fantastic. But it's got little weird things, like the fact that the voice acting clearly doesn't sound like it was done by an English-speaking person, like the referee timing, for example. Um, I am bombing that good. Things like that. Doesn't sound like it's done by a, a native English speaker, and, and things like that, which is, which is very charming and endearing, but it's very much not a thing... I don't even know what I'm doing wrong here. I've beaten this guy. But yeah, so that's the thing. It's very much not Nintendo. Uh, and that's what I like about it, because the art style in this game is fantastic. These character sprites are just gorgeous. And I actually like the sort of rocky... chip -toony, rocky soundtrack, right? Like, listen to this. You know what I mean? And, and I think that's cool. 
But anyway, so that's the reason I wanted to check this out. And if you look at other Nintendo games and then stack this up against an, like an SNK title or a Data East title, you're going to see what I mean. But anyway, let's talk about the gameplay, shall we? So what is this game? It's Punch-Out! It's friggin' Punch-Out! It's, uh, and Punch-Out, at its core, while it looks like a boxing game, it is a boxing-themed game, yes, but really, it is a... It is a... Dick! It is a boxing-themed rhythm puzzle game, is really what this is. Aha, I gotta dodge back. And this is no different. You you go up against a series of different themed characters that all have different patterns and movements and, well, cheap attacks that would normally never be permitted in the real realm of boxing, like that. Like a guy who blocks your punches by getting them caught in his flab. And this is the Canadian dude, too. We are not all fat like that. And your goal is to figure out his pattern and wear him down as quickly as possible. Your principal goal, obviously, is to take out the fighter, but as you can see, this is also a score attack game. And you are scored not just on your performance in terms of fights that... Bugger. In terms of fights that you... Or, uh, punches and strikes that you get in, but there's a bonus ticker, uh, as you can see, which is just beating... The, you get bigger bonuses if you beat the, the fight quickly. Bro. Oh, what? What, son? Ah, blew that. There we go. Alright. Now I'm getting in the swing of this. And that's your goal. And the, 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 the opponents get harder and harder as you go along, and your goal is to get to the end of the all the circuits in the game. And every opponent has, has a pattern. And the game, much like the original Punch-Out, gets unbelievably hard, and frankly, there's no way to put it, it gets obscenely unfair. <laughs> it is just, un it, it gets unbelievably unfair. The patterns get very, very difficult. The computer gets multiple unfair advantages, and in the end of the game, you get what's called RNG in speedrunner circles, which is short for random number generator, which basically means things that you can't predict. So things that will that will that will happen at random, which is why doing the end of Punch Out games is, blindfolded is considered an astonishing achievement because you can actually play if you're really good at this game and know the patterns of the enemies, you can play it by sound, which is what the speedrunners do. But when the randomness comes in. It's very hard to play it if you're not able to visualize and see his his moves being telegraphed, right? So that's what makes it so interesting. And this is a series that really... I say series, there's really only been three of them. The next one after this didn't come out till the Wii. It's a series that people either love or hate. Because it is incredibly hard. Even by the standards of 1990s arcade action titles, it is incredibly hard. And it is cheap. Um, like, for example, this is only the third guy, and I actually had a hard time, uh, I actually had a hard time with this guy. It is incredibly hard, it is incredibly cheap, and the fact of the matter is, it is, it, it is a puzzle rhythm game. There's really not much, it, 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 this is not a boxing sim, you know, if you're looking for EA's, f yeah, I've always had problems with this guy in this random sequence he does, it's very hard to break. Um... It's, it is very, uh, it is, it, this is not EA Fight Night, it is not a simulation of boxing, it just, it, it, boxing is the motif under which it frames its mechanics, right? So, but the, the thing that's nice about it is, despite its ridiculous difficulty, it is very accessible from a control and play style, so there are only basically uh, three buttons to this game. There is left punch, right punch, and your special move. Now, where this game differs at a mechanical level from the original Punch-Out somewhat significantly is that in the original Punch-Out, by scoring certain kinds of hits on guys, you would accrue stars, and those stars were basically uppercut moves or special moves that you could trigger. I haven't figured this guy out yet. Bah! Whatever. Uh, and it, so you could accumulate those special moves and you could use them as much as you wanted. But if you used them too often and didn't strike, you would you would wear out your stamina and you would slow down. Or you basically stall to catch your breath as a result. 
What this game does is a little different. So you see that power meter at the bottom. So that's what it is. I am not accruing a set or finite number of uppercut special moves. What I'm doing is I fight the dude, and as I get successive strikes without getting without getting hit myself, the super meter fills. When it's full, I can take I can take a swing at him. If you land one, that's what you do. And the difference in this one is that the super moves are not finite. They stick around until you get hit. So you can launch them infinitely if you want. But the more times you do it, the more times you leave yourself open to one of their BS special moves, a la that. I can't remember the dodge pattern for that. And every time you get hit, the meter drops a little bit more to till eventually it, you lose it entirely. And that's kind of the way this goes. But if you land it, you will get a series of very powerful successive strikes on the enemy that will do a significant amount of damage. So it's key. It's very, very critical to getting it. Because the way this game works is if you beat a guy down a certain way, you can score a knockout, which is simply that it counts up to 10 like you saw with the first dude, and that's it. That's ideally what you want because you're knocking them out faster and therefore getting a bigger bonus as a result of that. What you can do is get a technical knockout uh, as well, which is simply... I can't remember the pattern for this dude. A technical knockout is very, very simply, you knock a dude down three times, and that's it. So, the two main differences in this game are the way special moves are accrued, but also the fact that in the first punch-out there were... Um, now, I, to, I'll, I'll be honest with you, this is something I'm not 100% familiar with because I haven't played far enough into it yet, because I'm terrible at this. But in the original Punch-Out, uh, there were rounds. So basically, if you hit a, a certain amount of time, um, they would call a round and you would get, uh, you and your enemy would get health. Yeah, take it. You and your enemy would get a certain amount of health back as a result of that, and you would get a little bit of, a, a little bit of time to recover, as it were. I have actually never run into a, a point in this game yet where there are rounds. Um, there we go. The counter room's kind of... I, I've actually... See, because the problem is if he gets you in this pattern, he will literally hit you endlessly until he knocks you down until you get the counter in. Which is really tough. And this is only the third dude. So it gives you an idea how hard this gets. But that's the... Uh, and that's the thing. I don't believe there are rounds in this uh, in this game. Which is kind of a good thing, to be honest. I, I thought the rounds were a little bit flow-breaking in the original one. But that just shows you how, you know, this is really not going for simulator realism up in here, you know what I mean? And I gotta be honest, I, I kinda like this game better, just simply because it is the same idea. They refined the formula a little bit, and it looks and sounds a hell of a lot better. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Punch-Out, and it was a very impressive game for a, you know, a very early in its life NES title. But this is just really good, and I really like the fact that Nintendo broke from elements of their trademark production style for this game. It really looks like um, a 16-bit arcade game that you would see from a lot of other Japanese developers, and in the best way. It has really good production values. There's no real frame drop or lag. You know, it plays, it plays really, really well. And basically, this is how this goes. So, I'm only in the minor circuit here, but you can, can, you can keep... Uh, continuing until you run out of rests or lives. Lives are basically continues, and then that's it. But that's the nice thing is you have continue options in this. In the original Punch Out, you got passwords after certain uh, after certain numbers of rounds. Uh, you basically got passwords that would allow you s to skip forward a certain number of opponents. This game just saves after. Um, after your round, and as you can see, it's a similar thing. You you have to get past a certain group of dudes, but it's not a password. It's an actual save, which is really nice because it was much more economical to put save chips and cartridges in the Super Nintendo era. It was much more much more common. Passwords were 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 a godsend at the time, but the pinnacle of efficiency, not necessarily. Though they did allow you to cheat your way through games, which was also nice too. See, this guy's dead easy. This is basically the tutorial. And you see how it actually gives you little tips there at the beginning to be like, hey, here's how you should do this. So, that's kind of the gist of this. Uh, really, this is just Punch-Out done 
This is just punch out refined and done better. And I like that a lot. Good night. Oh, what? Come on. Sit down. <laughs> But I, I like the... Uh, you know what? I'm terrible at these games. I, I am unbelievably bad at them. But I like it. I mean, it, it is the sim most simplistic of fighting games. You know, you have left and right punch. You can aim low or high. You can dive back, and you can do your super move. And that's kind of all there is to it. But I like the simplicity. I like... The, like, I, I am terrible at more advanced fighting games that have crazy combo moves and everything else like that. This took a concept that is very simple, very easy to pick up, and it doesn't, pardon the pun, it doesn't pull any punches, but it will kick your ass, but it does it in a way that encourages you to keep coming back and iterating and improving. This is the same type of mentality that games like, say, Dark Souls um, and titles like that are, are getting for themselves, which is that they are incredibly hard, but they are also very fair. And they reward iteration and practice and just getting that little bit better each time until you master it. And I'll be honest, I don't have the patience for that. Um, but it's... Dick. I don't have the patience for that. But if you do, this is fantastic. And at the very least, even if this doesn't look like it interests you, and like I said, this is a game that tends to be somewhat divisive. People either think it's it's great, the idea is great, or it sucks, and I, I can see both points of view. But whether you like this game or not, believe me, you have got to go watch the dude who plays this blindfolded, and the guy before him actually does the original Punch-Out blindfolded too. You, you, seriously, you have to see it. It is amazing. And at the very least, you've got to, even if you don't watch the whole thing, you've got to skip to the end of it when he actually completes it. And the room that he's in goes absolutely crazy. You'd swear to God the guy, like, was in the winning locker room of the Super Bowl. It is, it is incredible. And, uh... Yeah, this game is, is really charming, and it holds up really well. Like, 2D games age far, far better than 3D games, as we all know. And this looks damn good. I really I really like it, and I really enjoy the idea of it. I, I'll probably see myself playing this a little bit. I mean, I will never finish this game, but I would definitely like to be able to reliably get past that third guy who's chain attack. I actually figured out when I did this in practice, but uh, I think I'm getting sick, so I'm kind of... Uh, kind of tired and my brain is kind of in a lower gear as you probably heard from my commentary but yeah this is super punch out published and developed by nintendo for the super nintendo entertainment system it is it is really really good and i believe this is available um for various i, I believe this is available on either the wii or the wii u virtual console i actually didn't check that beforehand but check the description below this video there will be um a link and uh, information on that, as always. And yeah, if, if, you, if this looks cool to you, especially if you're a type of person who's good at and likes rhythm games, you should check this out. I, I think it's nice. I think it's pretty cool. And it, it holds up very well, and this is one of the non-Mario, non-Zelda, non-Metroid past ideas Nintendo has had. That, yeah, they did a version on the Wii, but that I think it would be nice to see done more often. I, I'd like to see them do more experiments like this because this is, uh, this is, this is cool and it, and it was pretty innovative for its Victory. time, to be honest with you. My name's from Parallax Abstraction. Thank you guys all very much for watching and I will see you next time.